I bid you all grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is devotion for Thursday, December the 10th, year of our Lord, 2020. We are in the second week of the season of Advent. We'll continue to look at the uh, non-gospel readings from this last Sunday. And today we arrive at Isaiah chapter 40. Now, for some of you, if you're familiar with Handel's great oratorio, The Messiah, there are some readings in the Advent and Christmas season that you have a hard time not singing when you're reading them. And Isaiah 40 is, is one of them. This is the famous comfort ye, comfort ye my people uh, passage that Handel does so beautifully. But it turns out there's a lot more going on in this reading than uh, just what goes on in, in Handel's Messiah. And so we'll jump in with the uh, New King James and then I'll have a few comments about the passage uh, and why it is that we look forward to the coming of the Lord. So uh, this is New King James. Comfort, yes, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from Yahweh's hand double for all her sins. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of Yahweh, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of Yahweh shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of Yahweh has spoken. The voice said, cry out, and he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, because... The breath of Yahweh blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. O Zion, you who bring good tidings, get up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, you who bring good tidings, lift up your voice with strength, lift it up, be not afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, behold, your God. Behold, the Lord shall come with a strong hand and his arms shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those who are with young. There ends the reading. So, oh my gosh, what a beautiful passage, right? Now, as I joked with the uh, folks uh, in the sermon on Sunday, God is not calling for us to engage in a civil engineering project with you know, raising up the valleys and taking down the mountains and making the crooked places straight. What this is really talking about is removing all the obstacles that stand between us and God as he comes to us with salvation. And this is what we get from this passage. So comfort, comfort my people, right? You are my people, says your God. So again, that relationship that had been broken and severed by sin is restored by God's uh, mercy, And then when he says, speak tenderly to Jerusalem, it's actually speak to the heart, speak to their heart. So uh, speak to that part that is the foundation of them, speak to the part that shapes all their other thoughts and passions, speak there to let them know of God's love and mercy for them. Uh, speak comfort to Jerusalem or, or speak uh, tenderly to her and tell her that her warfare is ended. Now, uh, in the Hebrew, right, her time of enlistment is fulfilled. And so the idea here is that Israel has been chastened by God. They've been disciplined because of their sins and their waywardness. But now all the time of that discipline is fulfilled. It, it, it's, it's achieved its end. It's achieved its purpose. It is over now. Right, so it's not just the warfare ended, but the time of her chastening has come to its fulfillment. And so it is over now. She has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. And now that is done and over with because of God's grace and mercy. And so the voice of one cries in the wilderness, make ready. Um, and the, the uh, Hebrew is in the wilderness, uh, surface it, right? It, it make a surface ready for Yahweh to travel on as he comes. Uh, and then we get the mountains low, the valleys lifted up, the crooked places straightened out, the rough places made smooth. Just because, again, as Yahweh comes with grace and mercy, you, you don't want him to have to deal with any impediments, right? You, you want him to get there as quickly as possible. And so uh, the uneven uh, ground, uh, the, the rough places plain is, is actually, you know, make all the knobby spots, right? All the ups and downs, just turn that into kind of a smooth level uh, plain. And 
the glory, the chabod of Yahweh will be revealed and everyone will see it. And, and this is you know, what we look forward to, uh, that uh, God will make this revealed so we can see it for ourselves. And how do we know this will happen? Because, right, the mouth of Yahweh has spoken. Whatever God says, he will accomplish, he will do. So we can rely on him. And, and that's what leads us into the next meditation, right? Because we have the voice uh, saying, cry out, and, and uh, well, what shall I cry? And, and then we have uh, this, this passage, all flesh is grass, and its loveliness is like the flower of the field. But uh, loveliness there, it, it's a chesed, right? It, 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 uh, and that's the loving kindness of God, the goodness, the steadfast mercy, right? So the, uh, it, it's not just the loveliness of humanity that is like the flower of the field, but, but humanity's kind, humanity's steadfast love, it's chesed, of ourselves doesn't have any lasting power. So grass and the flower fade uh, when, and then this is the, the breath of the Ruach, the spirit of Yahweh, um, it, it, it blows on it or, uh, or, or, or moves on it. So in this world, because of sin, God has appointed time for rising and falling of all things. And so when God's spirit goes forth at the appointed time to do its work, then uh, our lives come to an end in this world, uh, but that's not the end of us. So the people are grass, the grass goes with the flower fades, but in spite of the temporalness of humanity, what lasts forever? The word of God, and what is God's word? That you're going to see my glory, right? So we're back to that word of Yahweh that is the hope and the foundation for everything that we look forward to. It doesn't matter that we're temporal, it doesn't matter that our sins carry us away, it doesn't matter that we fade, Yahweh's word to us, my glory is coming, my grace is coming, your warfare is ended, that word stands forever. So, having been given that word, what is, is, is the next thing? O Zion, you, you uh, who bring good tidings, you, you herald, right, of, of good news, get up on the mountain and proclaim it. O Jerusalem, you tidings of good news, right, lift up your voice, lift it up and do not be afraid. And, and the Hebrew is actually, you must not be afraid. Right? You've got such a message to proclaim. You've got such good news to announce. Why would you let anything stand in the way? Don't fear people being derisive. Don't fear people being dismissive. The news is good. The Lord is coming. Announce that grace uh, as, as it is on its way. And, and what is he even going to come and do? Uh, well, behold your God. He's going to come with a strong hand. His reward is with him. His work is before him. Uh, and then he's going to uh, make his flock graves uh, like a good shepherd. He's going to take care of them, make sure that they're fulfilled. He's going to carry the young ones and, and lead those who are with young gently. He's not going to put people on a forced march. So all of this, again, has to deal with the coming of, of Jesus, his birth, right? He is God's mighty arm come to lead us gently and give us the good pasture and give us good food. And we know that Jesus is coming again. And while we know there's a final judgment involved in that, we've heard that from the past several Sundays writing, we also know that this is nothing but redemption for those who believe. This is nothing but the fulfillment of what God's promises for those who believe, for those who've been incorporated into the body of Christ. And so we all look forward to that day of his coming and we seek to clear away any obstacles between him and us, right? Uh, for us, it's the obstacles of sin, uh, right? So, so we try to uh, get that under control and, and move away our greed and our selfishness and our laziness, lust, anger, all of that. We, we, we make a stop of it because we don't want to be holding on to anything that's going to keep Yahweh from coming to us with all of his rich mercy. Well, that's enough for today. Uh, tomorrow we will pick up the epistle reading and then uh, on into the weekend, we have our matin service on Sunday and that'll be up on our YouTube channel Sunday afternoon. So until then, peace be with you all. God's blessings. Bye-bye.